All right, welcome to a tutorial. This tutorial is meant to get you started using Moodle. What we want to do is go over the interface, help you understand where things are located in Moodle, and get started uh, using some of the, the basic editing tools so that you can modify your course. So what I want to do first is go over the interface, the environment. What you'll notice here to the left, in the upper left-hand corner, is the breadcrumb trail. This is the area that's always going to let you know where you are in Moodle, and where you can go, uh, help you go back and see where you've been. This NJIT link will take you back to the list of all the courses you're associated with. The next link, in this case the SP, uh, the S08 PTC, this is your actual course. Now as you click on different tools, this is gonna grow and change, and you're always gonna know where you are, and you can always jump back by just stepping back in the breadcrumb trail. Under here where it says switch role two, this is a really nice feature of Moodle. Occasionally, if you want to log in as a student, you can do that by clicking the student link. And what this will do is let you log in as a student and see how things are laid out. If you have a question about something, whether something was really hidden or whether a quiz is available, you can just log in as the student right there using the student link. Or you just click on the student link. It looks like you're logged in as a student. And you can go around your course and see what the students actually see. To the right of this is the Turn Editing On button. What this is going to do is give you the ability to move things, delete things. What you'll notice is when I click on it, a bunch of little icons are going to appear. And what these icons are going to do is give you the ability to change them, move them, delete them, add something. Now if you ever uh, want to find something, find a tool or add a resource, and you can't remember how to do it, the first thing you want to do is make sure that editing is turned on. Now, we have uh, on the left and the right, we have these things that are called blocks. What these blocks are, are little um, sort of like tools that are going to be consistent throughout the course. And you could move them, you could edit them, you could remove them, you could add them. The two blocks that you're most interested in are the participants list, and I'm going to click on this. This will give you a list of everyone in your class. It'll tell you what their name is. Um, if, if they've made this public, you can see what town they live in, and you can see the last time they accessed. For this particular course, I only have one student. In this case, it's Bill Reynolds. And I can see uh, their avatar if they've uploaded a picture. In this case, you can see I have a little picture there of myself. Now, this is uh, really valuable because this is where you're going to see your student list, so you'll want to check that. If you want to go back, you can either use your back button, Moodle does work with the back buttons in your browser, or you could go up to the breadcrumb trail, and go back one step to return to the main screen. The other block that you're going to be interested in is the administration block. You'll notice this administration block, it typically appears on the left, and what it does is gives you all the options you're going to need to take care of the administrative duties. For example, uh, if you want to go to the gradebook, you would go to the administration block and click on grades. If you wanted to go and upload a file, you would just go to the files portion of the administration block. So this is something that you're always going to want to return to. Now in the main part of the screen, you have your general content. Now the general uh, content appears in the middle of the screen, and there's a couple different ways that you could lay things out. Two of the most popular ways of laying things out are to use either tables, uh, not tables, sorry, weeks, or topics. Now, if you use, you'll notice this course uses a weekly view. So what you'll see is I have this first uh, topic that doesn't have any date associated with it, and then starting with the second one, you'll notice dates. And it lets you know uh, the purpose of this is uh, it'll, it'll lay out the topics with the date so every student knows that this this particular block right here runs from, in this case, January 21st to January 27th. And then the next block starts at the 28th. If you use the weekly outline, what you'll notice is the first block does not have any date associated with it. Now the reason for that is that's the block where you're going to put things that are independent of any particular week. For example, the course syllabus, um, that's going to be pertinent throughout the entire course. So you're going to want to put that in the first, the first block. We also have a competencies matrix in this example. That's something that the students are always referring back to. That's why I put that in the first block. We also have the general form right here. That's just a place where they could ask general questions. 
Now, a lot of times what I like to do is call this week zero, um, module zero, something like that, because it's just general place for information. And if you're using the weekly outline, the weeks start um, directly underneath it. Now, if you have a topic outline, it's going to be almost identical. The only difference is there's not going to be any dates. The nice thing is you can always switch back and forth from weeks to topics. One of the benefits to using the weeks, and one of the reasons why I, I use it for this particular class, this is a distance learning class, and in this particular block, the students know that the, uh, it runs from the 21st to the 27th of January. It has a title, and they know exactly what needs to be done this week. For example, I have the directions right here. I have a module one area where they can discuss things. It exists right here in the week one. They have assignment number one. It appears right here on they have these resources. So they know that during week one, they're supposed to do that assignment, go to that forum, read these resources. Everything that they need to do, uh, everything that's expected of them will be presented to them in this one particular area. And they'll know in this block, this is everything they need to do for week two. So that's one of the benefits to using, uh, that I feel, uh, to use the weekly outline. Another nice thing about the weekly outline is if I'm going to offer this course again next year, I just go in the following year, I can change the start date, and uh, Moodle will automatically update all these weeks. So with that said, this is the general layout for Moodle. This is the way that it looks. Um, if editing is on, what you can do is move a block down, move a block up. You can also... Um, I move a topic down and move a topic up, I'm sorry. You can also delete certain blocks. Now you'll notice this block has a little X that will let me delete it. So in this case, I'm going to delete this messages block. And it will then go away. I also have the upcoming events. And what I could do is if I click this little eyeball right here, I can hide it. And I have quick mail right here. Moodle's thinking is being a little slow right now. Uh, so this is hidden. I can delete the messages block by clicking the X. Or if you click this little left arrow or the up arrow, you can move the block to the left or the uh, move it up. That's up to you. So this pretty much covers the first of these little tutorials. In the next one, what I'm going to do is show you how you can change the themes so that Moodle can look different. And what I'll also do is show you how you can go through and um, change the number of topics that you have, do some of the basic editings, ed editing using the settings.